G'day viewers, welcome to another super helpful, super cool repair video from the Goat Shed. Today we'll be talking about pro football. Now we did do one of these last year, but this one's just come in for repair and we've just more a little bit of a tune up. It had a few problems and we'll go over those and then we'll uh, commence the troubleshooting. I'll just show you a little bit about what we've done to it firstly and then we'll carry on with the rest. Okay, this machine was made in 1973 and it was designed by Ed Krinsky and the artwork by Gordon Morrison. Now it's got some pretty funky artwork on there unfortunately the colours have faded a little bit but that's just the nature of the beast. Now, the machine that was preceding this game was Jungle Life, Gottlieb's Jungle Life, and the one that came straight after it was Gottlieb's Jack in the Box. Now, just before we go on, today is actually Monday, the 11th of March, 2024. It's 27 degrees Celsius outside, which equates to approximately 80.6 degrees Fahrenheit. Now we're in the transition from summer to autumn or fall and we're only 11 days in and we're still going to get a little bit of warmer weather for a little bit while yet till it drops down to maybe the mid 20s which is more the case for this type of weather. I think we're going to get up to maybe 31 or 32 today which like I said isn't unprecedented however it's all possible okay so we've done all the usual stuff now we're looking at the back box there we've done everything in the back box uh, the, the uh, ball count unit and the six score reels of course you've got the two point score reels and the replay unit now this one in the ball count unit had some really badly worn parts the coil stop and plunger were absolutely had it and it had a broken drive arm up stop we did mention this in a facebook post i'm not sure if i've still got those parts to show you there's the coil stop it's a bit mushroomed on the ends but it's really flattened out on the inside really worn deep i'm sorry i can't get really good focus on that for you but the same with the the mushroom ending on the on the plunger you can more or less see that at the top there it's pretty bad so we changed those out which you know you need to do it's important to make sure that you do those sort of things so we're happy with the head when we got oh one other thing we had in the head and we're gonna insert that in this video a little later so you'll have to stay tuned to have a look at that we had a really really loose switch contact pad in the n for nelly relay which is the 10 point relay uh, so much so the switch pad was moving up and down and we did a video on how we repaired that so that's going to get inserted there for you so stay tuned stay tuned here's the motorboard now it was pretty grotty we we've cleaned it up as best we can what we generally do with most machines we we take the cabinet outside when we've got the motorboard out and we we blow air compressor to blow it out and get all the all the crap that's on the base of it out we had to glue the floor of this down too it was falling out sort of should keep it alive for a little while longer um, but one thing we did find is that AB relay down there, which I'm pointing to now. That's the, I think that's the reset relay for the points. It was absolutely filthy, covered in grease and everything. It was terrible. Here's a sort of a closer look at it. Um, what we found with that looks pretty good, doesn't it? I mean, the idea is, you know, the switches. So we've cleaned all the switches with the Dremel tool and we've done that modification to the uh, armature plate regardless 
that, that means we're not going to have any more trouble with this game so we did a whole video on modifying those particular latching relays a few months ago so just search through our video library for it if you want to see how we do that and I emphasize that was not our idea and I give all the credit in the world to Tim Meehan that's Tim Mee from Pinside and he's one of our coaches on Mark Gibson's Fun with Pinball and we just did another one of those for people last Friday night just gone and we repaired quite a few machines there okay what else we've done here we had to as always we check the fuses now where the 25 volt fuse says 15 amp guess what we found in there a 25 amper so we've changed that and the light box fuse on the on the far right which is a 10 amp fuse um, we had a 15 amp fuse in there so we took the 15 amp fuse out of there and put it in the 25 volt and put the correct fuse in the light box which is 10 amp now other than that we've just done everything we normally do uh, with the relays etc we've, we've taken them all out and cleaned them and inspected them now okay just talk about that that's probably not something that an amateur should do take every relay out we simply do because we have the experience to do it and we know what to look for if you're new at this and you're learning fix the problem in the particular relay and as I just mentioned a minute ago you're going to see a specifically great problem that occurs a fair bit with loose and spinning contact pads a little later on in this video now all that remains for us to do now is foot, fit the play field up I'll show you that in a moment and get it going we'll turn the, turn the game on and see what happens hopefully it should, shouldn't be too bad one thing we did notice under the play field was the wiring of the flippers was incorrect and I'm going to point that out to you Now here we have the play field and as I said there, there was incorrect wiring on the flippers and it was only with the the two inside flippers what they actually had they had the common on the wrong side and then the end of stroke switch being soldered to the common so this one here the power was over here the bigger pardon the end of strokes which was wired up to the common it's a bit bizarre so we've put it the way it should be hope that makes sense to you so in other words these two wires here the, which is the end of stroke one was hooked up to the common which you, you don't do always one wire goes to the middle lug and the other wire goes to the outside lug and in this case that's the hot or power where the black is the common now other than that we we've gone through and we've changed the light globes as required we did not need to put flipper kit in this game we did not so this game has a vera targets two of them um, we didn't have to do a lot to them they're okay and the only other thing we did of any significance was we did put two new pop bumper kits in. Now, we've found by putting these kits in, there you go, you can see the nice shiny um, yoke. There's the fibre yoke and the metal yoke underneath it. New, new spring, new coil sleeve new coil stop makes a world of difference to the pop bumpers also Tim we changed the coil because remember one of the bumper rings was too high or low ok so we did too we changed the coil over because one was the old cardboard style and we and one was the plastic so we, we changed one or the other I can't remember which one we did just because we felt the bumper ring was a little bit out now other than that there's not a lot under this play field which is a really good thing oh and that's the other thing we did 
you can see the ball kicker coil here. We actually put in a whole new kicker because the other one was welded. So it had broken. And we actually have new ones here in stock. So we put a new kicker in and we've polished up the coil plunger and put a new coil sleeve in. Okay, so we're ready now to test this game and see what needs to be done to it. Now, while uh, checking the relays in the back box of this pro football, Graham was servicing the relays and he called me over and said, have a look at this. Now, what he found was that the contact pad on the top there, you can sort of see the, the stem on it is a little bit longer. What was happening, that bud, he sort of adjust, he clamped it a little bit. That um, switch pad was moving up and down. The switch was moving, but the pad would be staying and coming up and down and real erratic. And yeah, so that's pretty unusual. That, that nine times out of ten, that wouldn't have worked at all. And that's got big pads on it, so that's probably for a coil or something. So we just thought we'd share that with you now. We've crimped it up with a pair of pliers. You can see we've taken it out of the comb. And probably while we've got that comb, let's have a little look at the armature plate. Now there's the armature plate. It's a little bit indented, as you can see. Now seeing as we've gone to the trouble of taking one lot of switches out, we'll take the other out of the comb, we'll get the Dremel tool, or the flapping tool, and we'll fix that up, because it is the end for Nelly Relay, so that'll be the, the lowest points on this. It'd be 10 points, so that'll be the 10-point relay. And it gets a hard one and it, it would get a bit of a flogging. So we're just going to undo those screws and take the, uh, take the whole um, ladder with armature plate out. So there it is out of the game now. Let's, we'll take that and clean that up. And what we'll also do, we'll give the ladder as good a clean. Oh, hang on a second. Hang on a second. Our soldering irons hit that there. There you go. See that, Graham? Yeah. What do you reckon? Yeah, that's, 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 they need to replace them. I don't think it, maybe, the, I think the switch has gotten hot. You can see it on that side as well. That's probably the switch that's, yeah. That was the switch that we're fixing, actually. Okay, okay, we're going to replace that. All right. Because that'll be giving slot too much. Even though it was always play, but that's too much. Too much, yep. Yeah. All right. Now, viewers, this illustrates something that we've often said and this sort of has been brought up. Some people would sort of just say, okay, get a, a Q-tip with isopropyl, clean it, and away you go. Away you go. Now, goodness sake, that's just not acceptable. And you can see that, I'm sorry, I'm, I, I haven't got the gimbal out today, but, you know, we're going to abide by our own philosophy here, which is, do it right, do it once. So there you go, it's not a brand new one, it's not an NOS one, but it's just one we found in our parts stash. Much, much better, as you can see, no damage. Let's have a look at the other side, let's have a look at the armature side. Just a slight indentation little, little there, which will clean out. So we're happy with that. We're going to use that one and we'll put it back in. But before we do, we're going to get the soldering line out and we're going to solder that. There you go. Just a bit of solder on there. Remember, you had to clean it up fairly well. We've dremeled all the switches or have we? Oh, no, we haven't quite finished yet. We'll dremel all the switches and we'll put them back in that. Relay. Okay. So a little bit of masterful engineering by Spanky the Goat. There you go. That's all cleaned up now in there. It was a bit weathered in. You can still look very closely or see it, but that's good enough for us. So we use this tool here. We, we call that a flapping tool. I believe that's the right word for it. Now we bought a a ton of those off um, oh, eBay. I think we bought about 50 of them and they seem to last a fair while. 
and then you finish polishing it with a 443 um, carbon brush. Now that's what we also use to clean the switch stacks with. Now just remember when you clean these switch stacks, it is difficult to get in between there when they're in the comb. So this is out of the comb, it makes it a whole lot easier. So we've we've cleaned that, and now we've uh, uh, we're we're ready to, to put it all back together now. So let's do that. All right. So there that there's that relay now repaired. Well, we're spending a bit of extra time on to do it. That shouldn't give any trouble again in the future. I mean, look, we could have replaced that switch blade with the contact pad on it, but I think that repair will last pretty much so you know, yeah. forever. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we'll carry on repairing this game. All right, now here's the play field put back in the machine. It's all been re-rubbered and waxed and cleaned. Looks looks okay, not too bad. It's got the wrong spinner decal on it. We haven't got the right one, so that's up to the owner. Um, what I think we'll do now is we'll turn the game on and see, does it reset? Let's have a look. Okay. We have got some here. Yeah, we've got 11 replays up there. And a reset. Alright, now these reset very quickly. And earlier on in the video, I pointed out to you that the point score, which is the uh, in the right hand side here, is the um, for the goals and the football goals now one thing I'm just noticing with that point score that looks like the lamp on the right isn't working this is the one we did our video on on um, the lamp array I'm pretty sure this was the one anyway anyway that's nothing we'll have a look at that all right, now this machine, you have to press the right flipper to fire the ball. The right flipper. So let's do that. Up she goes. Yeah, cool. So that worked. Now we're on ball two. Um, so let's just check a few things on this game. So we have a slingshots located here. Now, that's interesting. They're not scoring any points. Let's have a look at this side. No, same thing. Let's have a look at the spinner. Same thing. Well, that's a bit odd. What's going on there, eh? What about any of the rollovers? Are we scoring any points? Let's just see. No, we're not. Okay. All right, well, that's interesting. We need to try and work out what's going on there. So we better turn the game off. Just in, I can't hear anything locked on. Now, interestingly enough, the problem why things weren't working on the play field was the ball wasn't sitting quite right on the switch below the apron. So I just sort of moved that and then away it went. So I think what we need to do is probably take the apron off and have a good look at that switch. But let's just continue on with this now. Uh, where are we? There you go, it's doing it again, you see, so. Then it works. Okay, the spinner, it's all working. Now listen to that noise, that's the 100 point. It's the score reel, it's not the reel. What I believe that to be is the coil stop in the 100 point score reel, so we're gonna have a look at that and make sure that's okay. And we noticed, I think it's working okay. Now I'm just gonna roll over, what do we got here? Uh, 500 points. Can we see there? 
Oh yeah, that's okay. So all the rollovers are working. We're getting 300, 500, 100. And because I scored a touchdown, that gives you 6,000 points on the high score. So that's, that's okay. So there are targets working. So what we've got to do now by the look of it, uh, well, pull this apron off. Oh, that's right. What well, we found, this probably explains something. We, we found that some sort of modification someone's done. Don't know what it's made out of. And it looks like the ball was going into that, uh, the, sorry, the, the kicker was going into that groove there. So we'll have a look at that and let's pull the apron off now and just have a have a quick look and see what's going on. Uh, we're also going to pull that 100 score reel out. And I think if we haven't too, we might ch double check that 100 point, which is the uh, M for Mary. We, we might have a look at that scoring relay. Remember, this is the one with the N relay. It had that really bad switch in it, which we showed you a little while ago in the video. So let's do all that. Okay, there was really nothing wrong with that at all. What the problem was, was me operating the machine incorrectly. What I needed to do, I'm so used to having machines with plungers, I needed to fire the ball out, and it would work. So now I haven't got, I haven't got a ball out, no spinner. I'll fire that ball. Now it works. Yeah, so just something to be aware of. That caught me out there a little bit. Okay, um, like I said, what we're going to do now is test those. Well, not test, we're going to have a look at that 100 point score reel and the 100 point relay. Okay, so we've gone over the M for Mary relay, which is this one here. That's the 100 point. So that's the N for Nelly Relay. Uh, we, that was the one that we showed you the video on back earlier on, on in this presentation. And that's the M for Mary. We ended up pulling that apart. It probably did need it. It did have a armature plate which had been a little bit indented. And remember we used that flapping tool to clean that up. So we did that. And we made sure that all the switches were in good condition, etc. But at the same time, what we found, the you'll recall the squirrels were making a bit of an odd noise. So what we ended up doing, we just pulled them both out again, both the 10 and the 100, pulled the squirrel apart, and we changed the coil stop in both because they were worn down a bit and the plunger in another and now the score reels are not making that thumping, horrible thumping noise. So that took care of that. Now the 100 point relay a couple of the switch blades were a little bent so we had to straighten those out. No big deal. Now when we were um, checking the game, we noticed that the where the football advances, you have a unit called the I Relay, Advanced Unit Relay. It had a wire off. Now, normally we service these I Relays, but this one seemed to be working okay. But I'm going to show you something in a few moments. It's quite interesting. Hopefully it'll do it for us, but we'll just have to wait for a few minutes. The only other problem we had was that the right outlane had a bad switch on it, uh, meaning that it was a little bit dirty and a little bit misadjusted, so it wasn't operating correctly. Now, bear in mind, this we haven't gone through for a total complete service on this machine. It was sort of brought in just to get it going again, see what we found wrong with it. And, of course, we found a number of different things wrong with it, as you'd be aware. And from what we presented in the video, and we've attended to that. Now, what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to take you around and we'll show you something. So what we're looking at there is the advanced relay. Now, 
normally we do service to these but it seemed to be working okay and as I just said this isn't a full service job it's only to get things going but we're going to have to do some work on it one thing we did have on this was we had um, the 40 yard yard yeah it's yards isn't it 40 yard football wouldn't light up and we'd already changed the globe so it wasn't that and it wasn't the lamp socket because we jumped it from one to another and we found a broken wire now this is a bit bizarre well just a what we found was the strand of wire, which I know that's not focusing well, pulled straight out, and you can see where he's moving that now, the black heat shrink. We had to pull that out of the loom a bit and make another wire, or join that wire together, I should say. Now, let's get back to this other bit. Graham's going to operate this... Um, relay, and you'll watch around near number six. There we go, so the smoke. And the next one should do it. A bit. Okay, now what that'll be, that'll be carbon tracking within here, mm -hmm. more than likely. Um, I haven't, it'll be in there, I can actually see the carbon in there. So we're going to have to take that out and clean that all out with a screwdriver and everything, and that should fix it up. So that is a reasonably common thing, and that's our fault for not looking at it, but as I said, hey, you know, uh, Norm, we're not we're not doing a, a really big job on this but you know we just got to fix what's wrong with it so we'll carry on and we'll repair that in a moment and then we're pretty well done and dusted on this machine most things are working now uh, let's just um, let's just do that eh? and then we'll uh, we'll play the game okay um, after dismantling the uh, eye the indigo relay again and cleaning out the little um, grooves in there between the tracks that insulate each one from the other. We've achieved success so I'll get Graham to move that now and that smoke will have disappeared. So we have, we have success there. Now, it took a little bit of fiddling around, it sort of threw us off a little bit. Um, but in the end we had to get like an exacto knife down in there. Let's just show you where we put that knife. There you go, where Graham's got the spring hook pointer, it's in that little gap in that little break there. We had to do it between the six and the seven and the nine, eight and nine. Um, had trouble. We do have new ones of these but we thought we'd try a repair first uh, there's the part number there and there was the look going wrong yeah a eight nine three three yeah so yeah what graham said that's very true there's two different ones all right so now we're ready to test the game so let's have a look at some of the gameplay okay Let's start a game now and just have a, a look and see if everything works. We've got scores on the um, high score and scores on the points. So let's do a reset. Beautiful. We're on ball one, as you can see up there in the yellow part, ball in play. Now, as you know, this is one of those interesting games. It has the shooter in the centre. Um, what other games have this, uh, Graham? Some of the baseball games. Oh, some of the ones from the fifties have the current shooter. But um, yeah, yeah uh, there wasn't too many. A few different ones, and it has four flippers. I, I personally not a big fan of four flippers, but here we go. We'll press the right flipper button, and that will eject the ball. There it comes. Now. There it goes through the spinner and advances the football up the, up the track. Now that noise you just heard was scoring 6,000 points. So what we're going to do, it's a little, I'll just try and get that a little better for you. Yeah, let's just, let's just move that spinner ever so gently manually. And that advances the football. We're on 50 yards. We're getting close to a touchdown. We're almost there, and away we go, and you score six. 
and six points seven. and six thousand high score. So that's the way that works. Now this is the game that we spoke about where it later became in I think seventy seven, seventy eight yeah. gridiron, a two player game. Now remember Krinsky who designed this game was still at Gottlieb and John Osborne had started in 1972 and John was asked to do design a true player version of pro football and obviously to save money try and utilize as much as he could of the original design so John really never got never took proper credit for designing gridiron but what he did do he never ever liked the fact that if you drained the ball down either side which when lit is a touchdown if the motor was still spinning and you roll over there you didn't get your touchdown points now how frustrating was that for the player if and when they would have got a replay. So what he did in Gridiron, he put in a delay relay in that to remedy that problem. So that was good. Now, all in all on this machine, it has the spinner, it has the, the rollover, the red rollover, two Vera targets. It's, it's feature packed. Yeah, there's a lot of places you can get touchdowns. Yes, and it has these little one point things there and when you score a point the donger goes off and it increments the point so that'll now go to 15 points so you have your rollers at the top as we discussed earlier on your four flippers so it's reasonably a fun game and of course what you've got to be so very careful of is when you you, you really can't trap the ball a lot of this because you'll get caught you'll open up the flippers and it'll open up that gap so I guess from an operator's point of view it was quite funky now the plastics are all fairly good on this game we do have one slightly broken plastic here and um, that's it isn't it I think that was the only, the only broken bit Usually this plastic over here is broken, but this one's good. Oh, yes, so that's right. I couldn't tell you how many of them I have. You, you make those, yeah. yeah. So that's that's the piece of clear perspex under that top bit there where Spanky's standing. Right, so when, when we were pulling this apart, we noticed that this plastic was out of this, um, this, this um, gap here. It was on top, which is, um, you know, as you know, it's not right because we're going to be hitting that bar there. So we had to fix that. It didn't matter because we had to take the play foot part anyway. So we're very happy with it now. And a um, few final tests, a few light globes are out that we noticed, but we've got to, that's okay. You get that. But apart from that, I think it's near ready to go. Yeah, well, overall, I think the owner should be pretty pretty pleased with this. He's, he's had this game since, um, when did we say? 2017, so yeah. seven years. It was about Pinfest one year. Yeah, that's where he bought it, yeah. at Pinfest in 2017. Okay, um, well, we just wanted to show you the finished product. Uh, as I said, we have done a, a pro football before. Um, I mentioned earlier on the, the funky artwork on the back, so that was Gordon uh, Morrison's artwork. Yeah. All the all the players and see, because his his women are really in the same sort of pose, like the same look on um, wildlife, very similar pose. Oh yeah, it's and um, King Cool's very similar as well. That's a good observation. Yeah, yeah. yeah there's good. a lot in the art of a different artist, isn't there? Mm. All right. And he, he he doesn't do men very often, mainly just women. Yeah. Oh okay. Yeah, you wouldn't oh, well. see that many men on a on a um, normal back. Maybe in this day and age that wouldn't be considered normal. Who knows? You probably have to do it. Yes. <laughs> Political yeah. correctness. Yeah. Okay, viewers. Um, one, we just want to remind you. So, we announced officially our tour this year of the USA. We'll be coming back late September. And I'll be over there till 30th of October. We'll put our itinerary up 
of where we're going as time progresses. All the flights are booked, paid for. Yikes, had to fix a few pinball machines. Um, we'll definitely be at the White Rose Game Room show in York, Pennsylvania. So hopefully we can meet some people there again this year. We'll definitely be at Expo in Chicago. Matter of fact, we're speaking there again this year. We've been asked to speak, which is good. Um, and we'll be in New York. We're going to try and visit some people in the New Jersey area if we can. Time is limited, unfortunately, and uh, it sort of makes it a bit difficult. But we will also definitely be going up to Poughkeepsie, up to the Pinball Resource, and we'll be meeting one of our good friends, Dave, up that way. So yeah, that's not that far away. It's only eight months from when we're recording this video. So thanks very much for watching. Please remember to give us the thumbs up on our videos and consider subscribing to our channel to support us. And in the meantime, till next time, this has been another Go Shed presentation.